The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! And hello and welcome in to Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tyson, my partner, Malik Hill. We're back after a little bit of a hiatus. News has been a little bit slow, and then all of a sudden it always seems to pick up. Um, the NBA Finals are over, though, and we're basically in that in-between wheelhouse. Uh, NFL news is starting to start up. We got mini camps going on, um, and then we'll get basically right back into the, the meat of the season. The Tigers are terrible again. Yeah, we you know, we were talking about <laughs> doing the Tigers a couple yeah. weeks ago and now it's Things already... changed very quickly. <laughs> so quickly. They 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 barely got my hopes up. I was just like this is interesting. Yeah. And, and then, then 10 game losing streak. Yeah. With injuries yeah. and all sorts of stuff mm-hmm. going on. So back to the back to the Tigers just being miserable. Um Javi Baez should stop playing baseball. Moving on. Wow. Uh, so there's a lot of like news and tidbits that we're going to get to today. We'll obviously talk about the new NBA champion, uh, which is a cool story overall. But I wanted to first start off with all the little tidbits. Um, so we'll just start with the NFL because that's like the least amount of stuff. And then we have a ton of NBA news. Um, there's a lot of like running back contract issues, which seems like always constantly pop up recently when a big... A big name uh, running back is, you know, trying to get a new contract because nobody wants to pay a running back a second contract. And that's why rookie running backs are such a, a big deal. And the weird bit is that, like, they're such a big deal, but also people don't run get running backs in the first round of the draft. All sorts of crazy rules and stipulations that people say up until this draft where, you know, two of them went top 15. Uh, so one of the top ones running backs that's uh, talking about holding out actually right now is Saquon Barkley of the New York Giants. Um, The last time that we saw a running back hold out was Le'Veon Bell. And then he signed a big old contract to the Jets. And how did that work out? Not well. Not well. Um, So it's a little bit scary. But also, I think Saquon Barkley is in a different place in his career than Le'Veon Bell was. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like that's maybe the case. Um, So it'll be interesting to see if he actually does hold out or not. Sometimes, you know, guys are trying to do it just to scare the team. Um, But that's what he's saying right now. And then um, Josh Jacobs is another one. He was also franchise tagged by the Raiders and has talked about his disappointment, I guess, with not being able to be paid or, you know, stuff like that. So we'll see if anything comes through with that as well. And then the other one is Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook has been the mainstay for the Vikings for, what, the last five years or so? I think so. Four or five. It's it's been about five since he was at Florida State. I believe he's had 1,000 yards in every season, except maybe I think except the first one. Maybe his rookie season. He's had four straight 1,000-yard seasons. Um, So he's a big workhorse. He got released by the Vikings. So that's pretty crazy to me that the Vikings were just – I guess he does have some injury issues. He's a little bit older, but it's a little bit interesting, I guess, for me to see them just straight up release him. Um, He is 27, I believe, and he's still got some talent in him. I think he's probably lost maybe a little bit, but not to the extent that you would be worried. And – the thing that I've seen a lot of people talk about is like the Lions, we always have to spin it in the Lions. The Lions, you know, use their 12th pick to take Jameer Gibbs and everybody was up in arms like, why would you take a running back that quick? And then now it's kind of like people settled down and they're like, oh yeah, that, it's not a bad pick. It's not what I wanted, but I like the idea of it. Now people are starting to backtrack again because they're seeing all these running backs that are disgruntled 
Dalvin Cook is out there. Why don't we just go get Dalvin Cook? Do we want a 27-year-old running back? Like, this team is made for next couple years, not one year. Um, so, to me, that doesn't make sense. But um, how do you feel about all these running backs that are kind of on the verge of, like, you know, being too old as a running back, but also not, and then the pay scale and all that? Like, we're seeing Derrick Henry still be a workhorse at his age, um, at his old age for a running back. Um, how do you feel about the whole running back landscape in the NFL right now? I, I honestly think this all just reflects how the value of running backs and kind of the respect of running backs has just gone down more and more every single year. Some of it is warranted. Some of it isn't. Guys, as they get older, their explosive, some of their explosiveness does go away. Like there is a reason why Derrick Henry is one of the only guys that stuck with one team mm-hmm. and has just been steady for so many years. It's because he's a freak of nature. Yeah. He's 6'3", 245, has 4'5", four, speed, almost 4'4", four, four, and is just a monster. Mm-hmm. There, guys like that don't grow on trees. Like Adrian Peterson had a very long prime. There are certain running backs that can last very long, and then you have guys like Todd Gurley. Mm-hmm. His prime was, what, four or five years, just shining bright? If that. And, and then the star just faded. I remember the year he went to the Falcons. I predicted on this podcast <laughs> it would be one of those years the Falcons bounce back, and it never happened. Yeah, It never got close. Mm-hmm. And Todd Gurley hasn't gotten a job since, which is really crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, part of it is just the the way people have started to rethink the running back position. The fact that if you just have a good stable of two or three backs that are reliable, mm-hmm. you can win a Super Bowl as long as the team is really good. Right. You don't need that like monster guy to get you somewhere. Yeah. Just look at the chiefs. I mean, Isaiah Pacheco is a what seventh round rookie. Yeah. And and he was really good in his first year. And throughout the playoffs, they used a lot of Jarek McKinnon. Wasn't Damian Williams like close to winning Super Bowl MVP the yeah. first time. They, mm-hmm. Like they've, they, they've just found guys yep. that fit what they want to do and play well consistently throughout seasons. Right. And that's worked for the best teams. Yeah. Now teams like the bills, are still trying to figure out their running back situation. Mm-hmm. It's a team by team, case by case basis. Yeah. And we'll even look at Seattle. Like Seattle, you would have thought, man, Kenneth Walker, he looks like a great steal in the draft. They got a guy for the future. They took Charbonnet in the second round. Yeah. So like that tells you the something. shelf life isn't very long. Like that, even when they have a lot of respect right. for you. That means that either they're nervous about Ken Walker or something that they want to use a second round pick. Yeah. The Falcon Tyler Algiers rushed for over a thousand yards for the Falcons. They go and draft B. John Robinson mm-hmm. with a top ten pick. Yeah, so it's it's weird to be honest. Um, yeah. I guess the question that I'll pose is like, would you rather have Jameer Gibbs or Dalvin Cook? And you know, whoever maybe you would have taken at twelve. I mean, right right now, I I don't see what the argument is for saying Jameer Gibbs over Dalvin Cook, just because you we all know what the potential is mm-hmm. and the skills that Jameer Gibbs has, but all we have is some mini camp highlights of him breaking the ankles of a few linebackers, yeah. which he will do once the actual play starts. Right. But we, we don't know how great Jameer Gibbs is going to be. Yeah. We've seen what Dalvin cook is. Like you said, he's just 27. His injury history isn't super crazy. He's had a few injuries, but mm-hmm. it's nothing too bad. Yeah. But you bring in the factor of how people look at the running back position a day. Once you hit 27, 28, 29, how much consistent consistency can you really expect? Yeah. And, yeah, when you talk about a guy like Saquon, tore his ACL, came back, had a great season, now he's he might start demanding things. Mm-hmm. That's a tough situation for the Giants. Right. Because, obviously, you want to keep Saquon, but how much money do you really give him? Because you're still building that team. Yeah. And you're starting to build some confidence. You just gave a lot of money to Daniel Jones, mm-hmm. and you're still building the team. So, yeah, it, it's, a, it's, it's a really – complicated situation yeah i guess one more one more hypothetical because jameer gibbs has been compared to alvin Kamara a lot would you rather have like a prime alvin Kamara or a prime dalvin cook even though this isn't prime dalvin cook prime alvin Kamara. yeah that's what i would do and i and he he was an elite all-purpose back for new orleans right but the team just wasn't good enough Mm -hmm. and drew Brees was on his last legs so what was the value yeah. That's how it is being a running back in today's game. Right. Christian McCaffrey, mm-hmm. last leg of Cam Newton in Carolina. Team isn't that great. 
He's a absolute phenom for two or three seasons, and it didn't matter. Yeah. He was good last year, too. Yeah. And well, they you put him in a winning situation yeah. around good pieces, right. he's, he, and he's healthy. But he's it wasn't, a, it wasn't but enough, yeah. I guess. Exactly. More, more so what I'm saying. Um, so, yeah, it, it's it's a wild, wild spot for the running back. Um, no longer are the days. It, it's similar to, like, pitching in baseball, to be honest. Like, pitching, you know, you don't use a pitcher for more than seven innings hardly anymore, hardly over 100 pitches. Running backs, like, you don't give them – a ton of carries. Josh Jacobs has kind of – he changed that last year with the way that he carried the ball. But there's not too many, like, workhorse guys. Listen, the the days of got us growing up watching Steven Jackson in St. Louis, just, a, just monster carries, LaDainian at his size getting all that work. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I think Adrian Peterson was the best running back of our generation Yeah, in the 2000s, really. And – he got so many carries, mm-hmm. and then he be, he just went from team to team for his last four years. Yeah, but yeah, that that age might be gone after Derrick Henry. Who knows? Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Um, the other NFL player that's been in the news lately that kind of was in the news quite a bit at the end of the last season, um, shown screaming at his quarterback on the sidelines. Uh, one of my favorite players, and unfortunately one of my favorite combos, Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs. Uh, Stephon Diggs did not go to the first day of mandatory uh, mini camp, I believe that it is. Uh, now, it kind of ruined it because he, he showed back up today. Um, and apparently, like, of course, everybody's kind of talking about, you know, they're trying to work it out and figure it out. Josh Allen says he loves him like a brother, all that stuff. Um, and, you know, yesterday, uh, Doug McDermott, Dermott, the uh, their coach was kind of concerned that Stephon Diggs wasn't at camp. So Sean McDermott. Sean McDermott. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I have <laughs> you said too Doug. Much. I know. And, and it didn't sound right. Like the basketball. Player? Yeah, Sean McDermott. It didn't sound right. <laughs> I've been playing too much 2K. Um, and so it's just he was concerned that Stephon Diggs wasn't there. So that you know raised alarms on ESPN and sports news everywhere. Um, do you think that? They're going to figure this out because it seems like he's just been disgruntled the last, you know, so many months with this team. Whether I don't know if it's just he does want more touches or he's just disappointed they're not winning. Maybe it's a combination. Do you think they're going to figure it out or do you think like maybe this is the the beginning of an end? I, it could go either way, but I, I honestly think I think the start of the season will probably most likely be like last year where they just got off to a start where they looked a lot better than everybody else. Mm-hmm. But near the end of the season, if they're not looking like a team that can win a Super Bowl and it's looking like they could have another disappointment like what happened with Cincinnati at home, mm-hmm. there could be a chance that he starts to get disgruntled and not quite Antonio Brown levels, but more of the stuff on the sidelines of him going back and forth with coaches, maybe going up to Josh Allen saying, where are my targets? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm open. I need to get the ball. It could be more of that. Yeah. And that eventually leads to demanding a trade, especially with wide receivers, mm-hmm. the diva position. That usually leads to demanding something. Yeah. My so, thought, yeah, if, if they don't kick it into the gear that everybody wants them to and yeah. expects them to, it it could happen. Part of my thinking is that some of it could be because of Josh Allen's injury last year. He just didn't look as good. Um, I went to the Bills uh, Browns game that was played at Ford Field last year, and I remember specifically because you know, at the game I got a fantasy team with Stephon Diggs on it, placed some bets, of course. Um, and there was a lot of times, and now I'm you know sitting in the stands, but there was a lot of times where Stephon Diggs could have just torched the Browns, and Josh Allen just didn't see him, wasn't looking his way. So it's it's interesting to me uh, after seeing that perspective. Um, but I do think part of it was maybe Josh Allen not feeling confident with his throws when he was kind of banged up towards the end of the season. Don't know for sure. Maybe that's just an excuse. Um, but that's just kind of my feeling. Um, I hope that Stephon Diggs comes back because, like I said, I really like I like the Buffalo team. I like Josh Allen. I like Stephon Diggs. Um, they're just a fun team to watch. Um, and I would like them to to finally get over the hump, but. I don't know. This would this would definitely hurt their offense. Yeah. It honestly seems like ever since the 13-second 
fiasco mm-hmm. two years ago. It seemed like that was Buffalo's chance. Yeah. Because most of us agreed that it seemed like Buffalo, like, they got their win stolen. Yeah. Well, like you said, and, yeah. early last season, it felt like. Yeah, they were just on a roll. You're like, okay, nobody can beat them. Yeah. And then, well, here comes Kansas City once again. And uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, I Also, I can understand his frustration with Josh Allen at times mm-hmm. because he somewhat regressed. Not yeah. a ton, mm-hmm. but he somewhat regressed as the season went on. He went the back turnovers to- started going up. Yeah. There were some inaccuracies. He wasn't seeing Stephon Diggs as much. Yeah, it was it was a kind of up and down second half of the season, and it reflected in their playoff game. Yeah, I think people forget he led the league in interceptions last year. Didn't he throw like 17? 17, yeah. yeah. And he's now on the co- cover of Madden for this upcoming season. Which they say it's a curse. That's what they say. They say it's a curse. Um, So we'll see. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting. They're, we're slowly getting more and more NFL news, which is it's fun and exciting. Um, I kind of I love when crazy things happen, but um, I don't know. Sometimes I don't want it to happen. I guess. Um, okay, moving on to the NBA, we've got. Uh, all right, well, we'll talk about Zion first. <laughs> we're gonna do it. I love just going to. So we we have a you know what <laughs> let's just get straight I was going to gonna talk about you know Bradley Beal but we'll get to that. All right, Zion can, Williamson. Can I can I kind of yeah if you want to open yeah, it go for give it. a PG rated version go for of it. the events. Yeah. So Zion Williamson has multiple women. Yes. That he's involved with. But they don't multiple, know. <laughs> multiple women that they they know now. Apparently. Some at first they didn't know interchanging at the same time. Well, it all started with Zion Williamson posting a video and a picture of him saying him and his girlfriend, which I, I didn't know he had a girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Him and his girlfriend, that who who knows how long they've been together, are having a child. Mm-hmm. Social media sent a big congratulations. Good for you, Zion. We're all happy for you. Mm-hmm. Quickly after, <laughs> another woman and pops had- up. In the adult film industry. Yes, pops up on social media, Twitter specifically, and just starts uh, honestly just losing it. Yeah. She just unloads paragraphs Mm -hmm. on paragraphs, hour after hour, tweet after tweet, for about three days. It started on day one, it was funny. Mm -hmm. Day two, it was like, oh, she's still going. And day three, it was like, this is a... this is kind of bad. Yeah. This isn't good. And I, I don't know anything about a, the third, supposed third woman. I don't know who it is. Yeah. But a third woman got involved. And this kind of made the New Orleans Pelicans organization take a serious notice. Mm-hmm. Because you can't have this type of stuff happening. No. You can't. Well, And it, it reflects even worse when women are giving detailed... Mm-hmm. explanations of when you're injured, like them trying to keep you in shape yeah, and just stuff that shouldn't be out. Mm-hmm. Very personal things that should not be out. Personal text messages, yeah, personal social media posts mm-hmm. between him and other women, just making him look so, yeah, just embarrassing him. And the problem is, We've all we're already having problems with Zion before this. Yes, with the whole getting healthy, getting in shape. Can't play more than forty games a season. Not really like seeming like he's trying to push through an injury. Uh, uh it's just a bad look, and now it just stinks because his focus was on other things during these moments. Yeah, where everybody was stressing him getting in shape. And and becoming the best possible basketball player he could be. Yeah. And this is the only thing that ever worries me about this, like, social media era NBA. Yeah. You're surprised it doesn't happen more. Yeah, because it's it's what I talked about with, like, uh, we talked about it before with, like, the Ball is Life kids and, like, Mikey Williams and all this stuff. Like We're not even going to – I'm just going to say baby Gronk. Yeah. And you, you – yeah. Like, just getting – too famous, getting too much money too early. Like we always say, like we're always in for, you know, skilled, talented players get their money while they can. Like no qualms about it. 
Well, the problem is too, when they get like the ego to it is where it becomes a problem. And then they start abusing it. And then it seems like they don't care anymore. And it's just, it's just disappointing. It's not like I can tell them to do something. I'm just, you know, some dude that's a fan. Um, but it's just sad to see, especially when, you know, we're in the era of like Kobe Bryant was like so dedicated to his craft. Now that's only one guy. And Kobe's like, you yeah. know, all time. Even, great. even Kobe got caught up in right. what he got caught up in. Right. And luckily it was all resolved, mm -hmm. but yeah, but it didn't take away from his on court game. Necessarily. Some would say he played at an even higher level while all of that was happening. <laughs> yeah. So it's just disappointing. And especially with now it's, it's Zion who we thought could maybe take over the NBA. John Morant, who we thought could take over the NBA. His suspension is probably going to get announced in a couple yeah. days here. Um, ben Simmons, who apparently is back in the gym, but. but we, we won't even go. He doesn't need to be. Into, in the, it's not about his skill it's or about his this. athleticism. Exactly. What's in his head is the problem with yes. Ben Simmons, yes. Um, and now we're just, you know, on Twitter, there's uh, the 2019 draft class memes all over the place. And it's sad because that was, like, one of the better draft classes around. Yeah. There, there's still a ton of talent mm -hmm. that can meet their potential. Tyler Hero was unfortunately injured. Yeah. R.J. Barrett had a decent run in the playoffs. He looks like he could still have a bright future. Whenever Zion plays, he's dominant. Mm -hmm. John Moran is one of the best young players in the league. Potentially was going to be the face of the league. Yeah. So now it just, get, it just gets tough because then, you like, it seems like the, the top player – market shrinks i guess um there will always be somebody that replaces them but these guys when they're on the court are like generational especially like zion in the limited yeah. time that we've seen him he, he can't be stopped <laughs> everything that he was advertised yeah. as um so i'm just hoping it's one of those you know young young player mistakes they get over it they learn from it and they become better We'll have to wait and see on that verdict, but it is a little disheartening at the moment. Yeah, I I have a question to ask you Okay, when it comes to this Zion situation. And it might segue nicely into the other trade talk where we're going to have. With the absolute tease that Zion Williamson is at this point, I, I, honest, I don't think he's, he's more of an idea than a player now. Because how how much have you actually seen him as a New Orleans fan? I just realized. And how much hope do you have in it? You used the word T. <laughs> he as a, as a player, he is so much of a tease, and there's so much of him not dedicating himself fully, yeah, to being in an incredible shape. And then there's this now. Mm -hmm. And whenever Zion is healthy, Brandon Ingram isn't. Whenever Brandon Ingram is healthy, Zion isn't playing, so they can never really mesh. Yeah. How serious do you get as in the as the New Orleans organization to saying we we just we need to cut this while we still can? Yeah. Because there's a great possibility we might never get the best of mm -hmm. what this kid is supposed to be. Right. Because they I'm sure they immediately start thinking of Ben Simmons just because of kind of the the lack yeah. of there awareness. Are out, yeah. There are outside something. forces that are affecting Mm -hmm. whether it's him or other things a lot right. of it is him there are outside forces that are affecting what could mm -hmm. be an, an all-time great career yeah i don't know i would definitely you obviously have to sit down and kind of talk with him and figure out how he feels about it um and if it, that is actually like a distraction to him or um you know if it was just like maybe a phase or something like that i don't know um i don't i also don't know when his rookie contract is up that this is what Chris was always good at is contracts. Yeah. <laughs> um, the numbers. But I would think about it. I don't know if you could just do it right now um, because it's also going to be hard to like, this is kind of his all time low at the moment. But I guess, I mean, I guess like the Nets with Ben Simmons, like they paid a pretty hefty price for him. So yeah. there, there will be a team. There, yeah, will like somebody, there will always be a team out there that will pay for all-time potential. Right. Ben Simmons, I don't know if he has it anymore. Yeah. He had it. Zion still has it. Right. A team will always pay the price for that type of talent. Yeah. 
they'll throw a chance at it. Yeah. So yeah, that that's kind of why. Hmm. I guess that's a, that's a tough question because they could probably still get something for him, um, while people are speculating whether it's going to be detrimental or not. But also, I think that if if the Pelicans want that championship window, I think they need to keep him. Because we've seen how close they can get without him. I just always think that they would be one step better with him. Um, but it's it's hard to say. We've seen them make two pretty good playoff runs for um, without him, but they also made the C.J. McCollum move expecting him you know, to play yeah. and come back and be some rising team. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's, it's tricky. I don't know if I have a, an exact answer, but if you had to lean either way right now, I would lean towards keeping him. Okay. Because I think it's too big of a risk to give up that much talent. And I probably would have said the same thing about Ben Simmons. Um, to be honest, um, even though you saw it with the Sixers, I think the risk of possibly losing a talent like that is bigger than most likely the return that you get. Um, so even though you could probably get a good amount for Zion, that ceiling is probably not going to be the same as having Zion. And now that that would be the risk that you would take and you would understand that, but that's not one that I would be willing to make as a GM. Yeah, I, I honestly hope at this point to see a trade because I think that could potentially, if the location is right too, because New Orleans, it's it's clear that New Orleans is kind of a place where he just can't, He's he's probably too immature mm-hmm. to keep everything together. But like when Charles Barkley went from Philadelphia to Phoenix, yeah, he was already starting to get into the best shape of his life. But in Phoenix, he just he he mentally and physically got went to another level. Yeah, and I think that could happen with Zion in a new place. Mm-hmm. He could finally cut the weight of for good and maintain what he should be. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've seen a lot of guys in the past that just a change of scenery can help. Um, even, I mean, the Pistons have seen it with Rasheed Wallace. Like I always say, he used to be one of my ho- most hated players watching him because I was like, who is this clown? What is he yelling at the refs for and stuff like that? And then he gets to Detroit. And, and you saw, <laughs> yeah. Yes, he's doing the same thing, but he was also a little bit toned down, but it was just the right amount of energy that he used. Um to kind of fire up the it was team. it was purposeful yeah. yeah um and then obviously then he becomes like one of your favorite pistons of all time um so yeah I, I could see possibly getting a location change the other problem though is i think of is that a lot of contending teams would want zion and then you're still going to be in the spotlight like no matter where he goes because of like just how big of a name he is at this point even for not even playing. I don't know if there's necessarily a place that he can like escape to, so to speak. Would be my counter, I guess. Like where do you think would be a good fit for him if he was not in New Orleans? I honestly Honestly, he could probably fit anywhere. <laughs> right. Because like he, talent wise, he he, could fit he anywhere. plays such a role where it's like get me the ball in the paint. Mm-hmm. Or in the mid, even from the three point area, he's his dribble is good enough to where you give me the ball and make space, and I'm getting to the rim. I'm yeah. most likely scoring or getting fouled. Mm-hmm. Uh, that works everywhere. Yeah, and he's a good passer too. So yeah, when they start crowding him, he hits open shooters. Yeah, I guess I would just also hate to see him be a Laker or something. Oh, that that would be a nightmare. That's not happening. So, so we know. we're good. That's not happening. Okay. Um, we did mention another player that may be on the trading block, uh, Bradley Beal. No surprise. He signs a big contract. Now he wants out again. Make up your mind, man. Make up your mind. Like (laughs) to me, it just, it's so weird when, you know, player kind of complains, wants to kind of be on a winning team. And then all of a sudden they're like, "Eh, I'll take the money. I'll, I want to be a Washington wizard. And now he's like, ah, the team's not doing very well. Well, yeah, look at your roster. 
It's it's not a championship roster. It's not a good roster. Everybody it's not knew a playoff that. roster. <laughs> Everybody knew that, and yet he signs a big old deal. They get Kyle Kuzma and Kristaps Porzingis, who are good players, but that's there's still not enough depth on that roster. There's still not a point guard for that roster. All your draft picks have just gone up in smoke because for the most they part. do just well enough. Yeah, they they're in ninth, that same ninth boat. and tenth pick wizards. <laughs> they're in that same boat that the sad boy Pistons era was in. Where you're picking just between outside. like six and eight, <laughs> yeah, and you're getting just these guys that you are hoping that turn into gems and rarely ever do. Um, so now Bradley Beal is, you know, possibly discussing. I think being the, the report is that his agent, yeah, was starting the field offers, right? Yeah, and that the Wizards are accommodating him at the moment. Um, so it's interesting, and now this is not realistic. But we had a little argument before the show today. Yeah. I would not be opposed if the Pistons made an offer. No. But you don't want no. Bradley Beal at all. I don't want Bradley Beal. And I think there are good reasons, sir. Okay. I think there are good reasons. Yeah. For <laughs> I'm not saying okay. that like he would be like, let's go all in for Bradley Beal. But I would think about it. I, I would think about it. Uh, this team needs something. This team does need something. But the money, first of all, you should you if you are a team that's still rebuilding, you don't want to take that contract on. Yeah. At his age, he's going to he's hitting thirty this year. Mm-hmm. He he hasn't been on many winning it in the best parts of his career individually, he hasn't won. Yeah. When he was still improving, he was on winning teams, but he had John Wall. He had good supporting cast and a good coach with him. Mm-hmm. I don't want him taking any shine or spot away from Jade Ivey. I want his growth to continue playing all the minutes he needs to play. I just, I just don't, I don't understand. I don't see it. I don't understand it. Yeah. The age, the money, the fit. I just don't the, see, I don't see the reason. I, I don't will, see the reason. I will agree. The fit is very awkward, but. We've seen a lot of teams play small. Now, the problem is that Bradley Beal is actually, like, quite small for a shooting guard. He's, like, 6'4", 6'5". Um, if he was more of, like, a 6'6", like, slightly longer wingspan, I would be almost all in on Bradley Beal. Just move him to the wing position, and he'll be fine. Do you know what I think the the Pistons might turn into if they did that? Hmm. The Bulls. DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine... Maybe. You just got some talented but, guys. But I think, like, DeMar DeRozan is a more known quantity that's a older veteran. Vucevic is an older veteran. Well, not not exactly player-to-player comparison. Yeah. But you add Brad Beal, I don't see any high, I don't see any high ceiling. Okay. Even if Cade hits the, the all-star level, even if Jalen Duren and Jaden Ivey are, like, the perfect compliments, mm-hmm. I, I, just, I just don't. Yeah. It's a no for me. I, I think, it's a no. I think I'm just in the point where I don't want to. So I don't want to be. It's hard because I don't want to go back to being that that middle middle team that I was just talking about, like the Wizards. Um, but I also don't want to be this bottom dweller anymore that we're we're like the Tigers rebuilding, 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 rebuilding. There's got to be a point where we put Cade and Jaden Ivey and Jalen Duran in situations that are winning basketball like they need to be in higher level games to be honest like they, they need a playoff run like i would take one play in tournament year to make that leap i would go back to being the sad boys for a year than being whatever we are right now but that's why they hired who they just hired yeah and we'll get into that but and if Kate stays healthy but like I always and say, and if guys keep getting better, but like I always say too, coaches aren't on the court, and we are still not. missing at least a piece or two to this team. Jalen Duran is going to be a great anchor. He's not going to give us twenty points a game. Heck, I don't think he can give us fifteen a game. Every once in a while, yeah. Cade and Jaden Ivy. I don't know if they're going to be like that takeover style player. Maybe, like, Jaden Ivey may have more potential 
to do that than Cade at this point. Um, so I'm just I'm starting to get to that point where I'm concerned. I think you forgot. I think you might have forgot a <laughs> I, bit of what Cade did. I haven't forgot when he played. I haven't forgot. That kid showed some stuff. He did when he played. He did. I I think he's really great for this team. I just I'm I'm starting to get concerned that we're gonna be stuck spinning this wheel. And I don't want to be stuck. Um I have I, I still have confidence in what they've done so far and what they're building, especially with the new hire. Mm-hmm. If they kept Dwayne Casey, I might be in the same <laughs> I'd be like, okay, I don't I don't see where the growth is here. Yeah. Yeah. Like could we like the thing that I pointed out, and I don't, it, this wouldn't get anywhere close because we'd have to give up first round picks. But if we gave up the number five, Bojan, Isaiah Stewart, and like, it would probably have to be two more first round picks. Maybe I don't like it. It's as too much, much. But that is too much. But there's a point of like, are we just going to keep sitting on draft picks? Like, listen, there there is a rumor of a trade I saw earlier this morning that I didn't bring up. That I personally like a lot. Mm-hmm. Trade, Bullion, and the 31st pick to Dallas for Tim Hardaway in the 10th pick. I've seen the Tim Hardaway stuff being lobbied around. I wouldn't mind Tim Hardaway Jr. Um, it's definitely cheaper. Now, this is going to sound kind of ridiculous, but Tim Hardaway kind of does what Bradley Beal does. He's cheaper. And he doesn't yeah. he doesn't need the ball in his hands nonstop, and he can just stand and shoot and play some good defense. Yeah, I think he's a lot. Risk- and you get the tenth pick. I think he's a lot riskier than Bradley Beal, but I get what you're saying. Um, I think you get a reliable shooter, I also a reliable three and D guy that's going to play hard. That's cheap, and you get the tenth pick. Yeah, I think that's a really good deal. Can we? I I don't know. I feel like can we even get the the 10th pick out of that, but I think Dallas would, I think Dallas would give up the 10th. Dallas doesn't need the 10th pick. Yeah. That's a big part of it. They don't need it. Well, we don't really need Bogdanovich would be a good addition to what they, we don't really need the fifth pick. We need the first pick. Well, we're not going (laughs) to, we're not going backwards, but we're going forward. Yeah. If you get five and 10 and a reliable shooter and defender and Tim Hardaway. Yeah. That's a plus. All I'm saying is the Pistons need to start trying things because they're in that spot. They're not going to get very many free agent opportunities. They're not going to maybe get the top guy. Like I said before, like they're going to have to be like playmakers in like Zach Levine or something like that because they, they have to do something. They can't just keep sitting back. They got to, there's a point where you have to turn and try to be aggressive, even if it's, you know, maybe the wrong move. I really liked when the Bulls got DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine, and Vucevic. I did too. <laughs> I liked that team. It hasn't worked out. But you have to like take swings. Every Lonzo Ball and Caruso were the key. Yeah. And yeah. Originally, I hate to say it, I liked when the Pistons had Josh Smith. And we, listen, we all, uh, there might be a few people that say and they, they weren't with it back then. They're I, liars. I, I can't find many Pistons fans that weren't excited. Right. When the Pistons got Josh Smith and Brandon Jennings, mm-hmm. almost everybody I knew was saying we're going to the playoffs right now. Yeah. Almost everybody. So, unfortunately, that, that's where I want the Pistons to be. I want them to you get. You want them to be where Josh Smith and Brandon Jennings? I just want them to. <laughs> they got to. this. You have to try every couple of years. You got to try something. You got to try. You don't have to take crazy. You don't have to take unnecessary bad, like, you don't have to sign people just because. You have to try, though. I understand trying. Yeah. But. I, I mean, sometimes you do have to take bad deals, though, because otherwise you're just sitting at the bottom for however long. What, are we going to wait for another Victor uh, Lembignano? I, I don't know about that. Are we going to wait for the next LeBron? How many teams have gone with the theory of we had to have to take bad deals to eventually do something? Most good organizations just make good moves. <laughs> Even if they're sneaky good moves, people don't see coming. Like, there are many organizations that just, like, this, this isn't 2016 anymore. There's no more big money to Nick Batum. Big money to I, – I don't think that's happening anymore. Right. Now, the money has gone up, but I think organizations have gotten smarter over the past few years. Yeah, I, I agree. So, 
Yeah, the age of just giving dudes money just because I, I don't, th- I don't know. Well, that, that's not why I'm. I'm not thinking that they would do it. They would do it for the correct price, but they might just have to try to beat other people out. I can understand so, that. Um, so I don't know. It, it again, like, they're in a weird even spot. the Jeremy Grant contract in the moment, mm-hmm. we were like, "That's yeah. all right." I loved the Bojan move. I thought that was perfect. He worked out even better than I thought he was. I, I, yeah, I could support the Bojan. But I move. like that move. Um, another good move that I'll just segue it right in. The best move they've made all offseason. They made Wani Williams the highest paid coach of all time. Six years, yeah. seventy eight and a half million. They got the guy that we all wanted, basically the number one coach that at least in general consensus what that was available. They went out and they got him. It helps soften the blow from the terrible draft lottery. Um and he's a player's coach. He's already had his press conference with the team. Um, he looks like, you know, guys are already enjoying his company. Yeah, the whole team showed up, which mm-hmm. is good to show, yeah, the team is already bought in. Right. So that's an improvement. That also can play into free agents. Sometimes if the right coach Definitely. is there, guys will come to play for that coach. Yeah. Maybe there's that opportunity. Um, how do you feel about the Monty Williams hire? Just A plus, no problems. A plus for me. The the money is a lot, mm-hmm. but you got your guy. Yeah. Like you you needed to hit on this coaching hire and you went out and got a guy that has won. Yeah. And hasn't lost much in the NBA. Monty Williams has a higher salary than most of the players on the team. True. Yes. But that's Tom, that's coming out of Tom Gore's pocket, so I don't care. Yeah. It's not we're not worrying about it for the salary cap or anything like that, so Pay the coach. Yeah. In order to get this team back on track, you have to make these types of moves. Mm-hmm. Because we we said the Pistons have been in a either weird or bad place for so many years at this point. Yeah, that you have to bring out you have to bring out all the stops. Mm-hmm. You've made good draft picks. You have good young talent. You got to build the roster more, but you also need that coach mm-hmm. that has shown that he's capable of getting the best out of guys. Yeah, and Monty is one of those guys. I agree. Um. Something that I just thought of before we get to the, the championship. Um, did you see the clip of Amani Bates playing with Jalen Duran? Yes. I saw them working out together. Would he be available at 31? I don't want him. Okay. I still don't want him. I don't necessarily, but at that, if we were able to get him for our second pick, I might give it a try. If they somehow got another second round pick in like the 40s, mm-hmm. 50s maybe. All right. And Amani Bates is still on the board. We'll talk about it when we get to mock draft. I'd be like, okay, all right, yeah. But besides that, eh, not a fan. Like I wanted Jaden Hardy badly in the second half. I mean, in the second round last year, mm-hmm. and I still kind of wish they drafted him, even though the Procida kid looks good in Italy. But who knows when he's coming over? Yeah, I wanted Jaden Hardy pretty bad in the second round. I won't feel that way about Amani at all this year. Okay, just curious. All right, and finally, the big big topic. NBA Finals are over, and we have a new champion that has never, first time. never won, yeah. ever. The Denver Nuggets are your NBA champions. Nikola Jokic is the MVP. No surprise there. And all he wants to do is to go home. I, res- I respect that man so much. Um, kind of the funniest uh, finals interview that I've ever seen, at least. He was just very nonchalant. Jamal Murray, Aaron Gordon are over there crying. Nikola Jokic is just like, this is good. He's like, this was <laughs> this good. good. We got good teammates. I'm yeah. just ready to go home. And then if you saw in the press conference, the pu- yeah, the post game when he finds out about the, the parade, parade. <laughs> we got he, a parade on Thursday. He put. Oh, he, he's like, no. He just puts. His, he's yeah. just like, I gotta go home. He's just disappointed. Um, but I can respect that. You know, he's he's not from the United States, so I'm sure you know having so much family over there. That's where he spends a lot of his off season. So he had an extended off season or extended season this year. So it's going to be shorter. So I can only imagine him just wanting to be home. Um, but it was cool to see his whole, like a lot of his family was there for the celebration. Um, and unfortunately it was pretty disappointing finals overall. Um, yeah, I had Denver in six, I think. Yeah. And I don't even remember if I said Even though or... that, that last game was was really good at certain points, mm-hmm. like the second half and the fourth quarter. Yeah. yeah. 
But it got sloppy too a little bit. Oh yeah. Um a lot of turnovers to start, a lot of missed shots. Yeah. But it played out a lot like we thought. Like Miami just didn't have a lot for Denver. Like the matchups were just not good. And they were gonna need uh Jimmy Buckets to uh get more buckets. We'll get to him. So we'll get to him. Uh um, listen, yep. Bam out of bio. Proved everything he needed to prove in the playoffs. I hope people don't forget how good he was in those finals. Yeah. Um, because he was really good. The other thing that was odd is that they finally cleared Tyler Hero to play, and they didn't play him. Uh, so that was just odd to me that, you know, you even declare that he's able to play, and then... I think everybody just wanted it so bad. Yeah. I I wouldn't have done more damage to my hand either. Yeah. If it was like a game seven, I might have considered it, but mm-hmm. yeah. if. It was it was clear that he still wasn't a hundred percent. Right. I thought they would have at least run him like early on and just see, but nope, not at all. They just said he was available. Um trying to think of any other news from that game before we get to Jimmy Butler. Well, I think we should just talk about how complete of a team Denver has been through these entire playoffs. Yeah. I think the record is sixteen and two, mm-hmm. or four. Was it four? I don't remember. I can't remember I how many see games. That stat, so. But they've they've had like the like fourth or fifth best run of the playoffs in like the past thirty years. Mm-hmm. They they walked through everybody, made it look convincing. Nikola Jokic led the playoffs in points, rebounds, and assists. Yes, him and Jamal Murray were the first pair to both average twenty five, five and five. Yeah. In the playoffs. He almost averaged a triple-double, Jokic did. Yeah. He was pretty close. I think he averaged seven assists. In the finals alone, he had a 30, 20, and 10 game. Mm-hmm. He averaged 30, 15, and 7, I think. Yeah, in the fun. Phoenix series, he had a 50-point game. Mm-hmm. He was unbelievably great. Yeah. And high-level consistent throughout these playoffs. Mm-hmm. Like, do you compare it to, like, the Dirk run? Dirks, yeah, was more imp- Dirks was more impressive from an individual stand base by, like, who he took out. Mm-hmm. But Nicole, like, no, it was just easy for him Yeah, for the most part. Every single thing he did. Right. And Jamal Murray is, hasn't even been an all-star yet mm-hmm. and rose to the occasion and was just lights out for most of these playoffs. Like they, I think he shot 40% from three. Yeah, Nicole Jokic shot 42% from three, which is just yeah, absurd. Well. Almost sixty percent from the field, mm-hmm. just just a monster. And then listen, Aaron Gordon, fourth pick in the draft in twenty fourteen. A lot of people thought he would not be that big of a piece for the for the Nuggets. Yeah, he was their best defender all throughout these playoffs, mm-hmm. and had big offensive games. Michael Porter uh, Jr., the steal of his draft that we always knew. Yeah. He he came up short in the end, kind of, but still had his moments. Yeah, Bruce Brown, former Piston. Yeah. Had some Got big it rebounds. Done. KCP, former Piston. Had some big shots. Got it done. Reggie Jackson played okay, a minute in the finals. Right, stop it. Reggie Jackson played a minute in the finals. He just... Did you, Three I, Pistons. I noticed him at times in the the huddle, like at the end when they were all on stage, and he just looked... He was like, just there. He knew he wasn't a part of he, it. He was just there. Um, yeah, and uh, listen... Ish Smith. Can't forget the man on his 14th team. The living journeyman legend is Smith, yeah. former Piston, mm-hmm. got a ring. Yep. Four Pistons, yeah, all got a ring. Uh, Jeff Green getting a ring after Uncle. Je- I'm so happy you brought that up. I'm so happy for Uncle Jeff, the fact that he got a ring. I'm not very happy that DeAndre Jordan got a ring. Yeah, because Demarcus Cousins should be in his position, but we're not gonna go yeah. too far on that. That's the whole thing. Demarcus deserves his flowers. Um, real quick. Make a thing on Jimmy Butler, and then we'll discuss Jokic one more time. My favorite player. Some were calling him Himmy Buckets at one point. He was. He has these moments where he's just better than everybody on the planet. The Milwaukee series, he was unconscious. The Knicks series, he wasn't as great, but he had his moments. Mm -hmm. And there was just kind of like a steady decline through each series. The Boston series, he did have a few games where he was Himmy Buckets. Yeah. He finished out well, but man, this series he just wasn't he just wasn't there. Mm. The ups and downs of being a, a fan of Jimmy Butler, it's it's like he he rises up to the occasion just out of sheer force. 
yeah. and making himself get it done. And then there are those moments where it's clear that he's not like as talented as the greatest of the greats. And it just doesn't happen. Yeah. Even in this last game, he starts off like three of 14, but then he scores 13 straight in the fourth to keep them in the game yeah. and almost won the game. It's like one of it's, those. It's so weird. He's one of those guys that he can like level up just mentally and that pushes him past maybe his yeah. skill level. Which is why he's my favorite player. The yeah. fact that he can do that. Mm-hmm. But it's it's just the fact that he got to the finals, he deserves all the credit that he got these eight seed heat to the finals. Yeah. But coming up short, it's kind of like becoming a Jimmy thing. Mm-hmm. Like he can do just enough to get you to a very high level, but he's not enough to get you over the hump. Right. Which shows Miami Heat might be one of those teams that are in the Bradley Bill sweepstakes or Dame Lillard. They were in the past, so I'm yeah, sure they, they're going to be they right They need back. another guy to get over the hump, and they'll probably go hard for one of them. Yeah. But, yeah, it's just a weird high highs and low lows of Jimmy Butler. Still my favorite player, but just a weird playoff for Jimmy. Yeah, cool that I eight seed got to the finals. But yeah, back to Joker. All right. Where are we putting him? He's he's now <laughs> listen. He's already okay, so he only has one championship. Two MVPs. That's kind of his only downfall. Probably should have been three MVPs. Yeah. Um the, a lot of people are saying this was just the here Joel MVP. Yeah. They just um, gave it to him. He is now kind of right in that conversation with Steph of like eclipsing the greatest of all time mention at least yeah it because the the top five center list is so stacked yeah he's that, like officially tough he's like officially in the top five there's like kareem Shaq, wilt hakeem mm-hmm. some people have like moses malone five do you consider tim duncan a center or power forward? he's he's the great he's the all-time power forward he's the number one on the four list yeah but yeah Jokic is like right at four mm-hmm. i mean right at five almost four some people, it depends on Wilt, Bill. Yeah. Some people say, I never saw them. The black and white stuff, they can't get with it. Right. I got Jokic at five. Hmm. I need him Almost to, four. I need him to win one more, I think. If, it, if he wins one more, he's officially like a top 25 player. Yeah. Because he's top 50. Mm-hmm. He's in the top 50 the right other, now. The other thing that's concerning, which I've heard a lot of people say, um, and Denver fans are totally okay with it because they just brought him he brought them a championship. But a lot of people are concerned concerned is a loose term that he may end up leaving basketball Retiring early. early. I'm happy you brought this because up. Because he's very, you know, just he grinds really hard. He's, you know, he's all in when he's playing. But maybe he puts so much in that that's why like his NBA finals, he was kind of like I got the job done. Let's yeah, go home I, now. I honestly think if he if he wins another MVP, another championship, and just like keeps making deep runs in the playoffs by thirty two or thirty three, there's I think there is a chance Jokic might just wrap it up mm-hmm. because just as much as he loves basketball and the passion, and a lot of people love how stoic he is. Those moments, like in in that game in the fourth quarter, that moment where they pan to the sideline and he is screaming at his teammates. Right. Because nobody's just – he's the only person that's, like, rising to the occasion in the moment. Mm-hmm. And he's screaming to get everybody awake. Those are the moments of Joker that I love really the most. Right. When it's time to get people's, atten- people's attention, he does it. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, he loves riding horses <laughs> and living on his farm in somber Serbia yeah. just as much as he loves playing basketball. Right. He seems like he's – I mean, obviously, he's a big family man. Yeah. Um, he likes to be with family. And if he can just, you know, retire and enjoy the rest of his life, I'm sure he would be fine with that, which yeah, is cool. So. He's just very nonchalant. Um, but like I said, when in when he's in the game, he's, he's locked always, in. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I think he needs to get, like, one more championship, and he's easily top five. And Sinners? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right now, yeah. right now he's like he's on. I'd the say I'd say he's top forty all time for me at top five center, mm-hmm. number five. He wins another championship, and he could easily win another MVP. Yeah, he goes to top twenty five player mm-hmm. and potentially like a top four. Center. I'd have to look at it. He because he could he could pass a king. He could get into top fifteen players of all time. I think it's possible. It but, is possible. But yeah, I don't know. It, it's crazy to think about. Um, again, it's another one of those guys that like kind of comes out of nowhere 
Um, After two MVPs, people didn't want to give him his respect. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people saying that, like, they can't stand the way he plays. It's overrated. Like, they, I, the Heat, everybody needed this run. Yeah. To for people to see. I will say, I think just Denver just does not get enough airtime. That too. Because when I like, I watched him so closely in these games, and it's incredible, actually. What he, he does. what what he does, nobody else can do it. Yeah. He is both like, he is Magic Johnson. He's Larry Bird. He is. He is everything wrapped into one without the athleticism. Yeah. He's got that Tim Duncan touch, possibly better touch. He, listen, he, he might have the best touch I've ever seen in basketball. Besides like Akeem, when he puts it up around the basket, it seems automatic. every time. When he yeah. shoots from three, it seems automatic most of the time because mm-hmm. his touch is just that good. Yeah. It's pretty cra- It's fun to watch. Yeah. Um, I can see like from an outside perspective that it's boring to watch. Yeah. From, from a casual fan. Yeah. I could well even from a casual fan standpoint. Some of the stuff I he does is fun. You you have to some. I think some people might just have to see it like live, because mm-hmm. seeing him play seeing him play against the Pistons live mm-hmm. was unlike anything I've ever seen. Yeah, he got thirty ten and ten, and it was like he was just out there. Mm-hmm. He was just out there passing, making shots. You look up, game over, thirty ten and ten. Right. It's just like yeah. And and I I hate to bash on Russell Westbrook while we're doing this, but. I don't care at the same time. He's the negative side. But, of, like, <laughs> yeah. he, we bashed Russell Westbrook for getting, you know, a season of triple-doubles. What an amazing accomplishment. But when you watch, when you compare hit, like, Russell Westbrook's triple-doubles to Jokic's triple-doubles, it is <laughs> it's a completely day and different, night. Yeah. So, I don't know. It, it's it's crazy. He's, is he the is he the best player in the NBA right now? Yes. Okay. I don't, I don't think it's it's not a question. Yeah. After think, this, he is the best. I think everybody else has too many question marks at the moment. I mean, yeah, I, I guess there could be Giannis arguments because he's still there. Right. There's the there's a, there's a great chance they could come back and make it to the final. A Giannis versus Jokic finals would be incredible. Mm-hmm. That that's that needs to happen somehow. Milwaukee versus Denver in the finals. Who would have thought that would ever happen? Yeah. Um. So yeah, we'll we'll see. NBA season is over, so now we're we're looking to off season. Detroit's got a Another big off season, unfortunately. Yeah, they're gonna have to figure something out. Um, like we said, NFL, we're gonna start getting into some mini camp stuff, get into training camp in a couple months, and uh, more college football news. I think we're gonna talk about the schedule maybe next week. Yeah. Um, yeah. Start to get into the fun stuff. Yeah, and we'll just add some news and notes here. Oh, we're scrapping the Tigers because, like we said, they're done. Yeah. Um, unfortunately. <laughs> but um, yeah. This has uh, been a good episode. This has been Views from the Sidelines, and we'll see you guys next time. Carmelo Anthony should have been at that game. Oh, my gosh. We didn't mention Carmelo. And both of their 15 should be retired at the same time. We're making a dedication to Carmelo next week. Yes.